Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about galvanic cells, sometimes referred to as voltaic cells. So what is a galvanic cell? Well it says right here, a galvanic cell or a voltaic cell is a device that uses a chemical reaction to generate electricity. And named after Luigi Galvani or Alessandro Volta respectively, galvanic cells derive their electrical energy from spontaneous oxidation reduction reactions that are taking place within the cell. And so in an earlier video, we learned about oxidation reduction reactions. Whenever we have an oxidation reduction reaction, there's going to be a transfer of electrons that is taking place between the substances in a chemical reaction. So it's the uh, exchange of electrons that is generating uh, the electricity in a galvanic cell. So let's take a look at what's happening. We have a, a beaker here on the left hand side and in this beaker we have a solution of zinc sulfate. And in this beaker here on the right we, we have a solution of copper 2 sulfate. And what we're going to do with this solution here is we're going to put a piece of metal in this solution. We're then going to uh, attach a wire to this piece of metal and we're going to uh, attach the other end of this wire to this piece of copper metal right here and we're going to drop this piece of copper metal into this solution of copper 2 sulfate. We're going to connect these two beakers with what is called a salt bridge that is filled with a solution of NaCl and we'll talk about the salt bridge momentarily. But understand what ends up happening whenever we have this sort of setup right here. Whenever we take a piece of zinc metal and we attach a wire to it and then attach the other into a piece of copper metal and then we drop these into these beakers here where this beaker here contains zinc sulfate solution and this beaker here contains copper 2 sulfate solution what ends up happening is this what ends up happening is that copper metal if we take a look on a periodic table of elements is more electronegative than zinc. What does that mean? Well copper likes to pull electrons toward itself and so whenever we have a setup like this where we have zinc attached to this wire that is then attached to copper and we've placed these in these two solutions here this copper here is going to want to pull electrons from zinc and that's exactly what happens. What ends up happening is that the electrons end up leaving the zinc atoms here and they end up being attracted to the copper metal over here. And so anytime we have free flowing electrons like we see right here through a wire, well, electricity is going to be generated. And if we wanted to, we could attach a light bulb to this. And uh, in fact, this light bulb would end up uh, glowing as a result of this chemical reaction that has taken place between our zinc metal and our copper metal. And so this is the basic idea of a galvanic cell. We have electricity being produced from a chemical reaction that is taking place between our zinc metal here and our copper metal here. And so uh, one important thing to consider before we take a look at this galvanic cell on a microscopic level is that metals are insoluble in water. However, their metallic ion counterparts are typically soluble in water. So what does that mean? Well, if we take a look at this piece of zinc metal here, if we put it in this aqueous solution, it's not going to dissolve by itself. And if we take a look at this copper metal over here and we put it in this copper 2 sulfate solution, it's not going to dissolve all by itself because uh, metals are typically insoluble in water. However, it says that their metallic ion counterparts are typically soluble in water. So when zinc ends up losing two electrons and forming zinc 2 plus ions, well these ions right here are soluble in water. They're going to dissolve in water. And as we see over here, copper 2 plus ions are soluble in water as well. However, copper metal is not. And so let's take a look now at how this all comes into play on a microscopic level. And then let's take a look also at this salt bridge here on a microscopic level to see what's happening and what is creating this galvanic cell. And so what we've done is we've taken the previous picture and we've blown it up. We've blown it up so we can see what's happening on a microscopic level. So here we have our zinc metal in our zinc sulfate solution right here. And here we have our copper metal in our copper 2 sulfate solution right here. 
And so on a microscopic level, here's what's going to end up happening. Copper here is more electronegative than zinc. So it pulls electrons from zinc through this little wire here. These electrons are going to travel this way through this little wire, eventually reaching this copper metal over here. However, let's take a look at what happens over here to our zinc metal. When electrons end up leaving a zinc atom, what ends up happening is that zinc, if we take a look at this right here, this zinc is going to end up forming Zn2+, as two electrons from this zinc atom get pulled through this wire over to this side over here. And so zinc metal we know to be insoluble, and it does not dissolve in water. However, when it loses two electrons, it ends up forming soluble zinc ions that jump off of this little zinc metal bar here and into solution. Okay, so understand that that's how that works. It says right here that zinc metal loses two electrons forming the zinc ion and dissolves into the solution. And so as these electrons travel through this wire over here to this copper metal, what ends up happening is this. This copper 2 plus ion right here would love to have two of these electrons right here. And so when these two electrons reach this copper metal bar right here, this copper right here jumps onto this bar right here and forms a copper metal atom. Okay, so understand that concept that over here what's happening is that zinc is losing two electrons. Zinc is being oxidized. If you remember from an earlier video. And if we take a look over here, copper ions right here are gaining two electrons and so we can say that the copper is being reduced on this side and if we remember from an earlier video anox and red cat we would say that our zinc here is our anode our zinc metal is going to be our anode. This is the point at which oxidation is taking place. And we would say over here that our copper metal is going to be our cathode. This is the place where reduction is taking place. Okay. And so where does this salt bridge containing sodium chloride solution end up coming into play? Well, let's think about this. As electrons leave this zinc metal right here and travel through this wire over to the copper right here, zinc metal atoms turn into zinc ions and they jump off into solution right here and dissolve. And so because of that, a positive charge ends up building up in this solution right here. And so to neutralize this charge, what ends up happening is that chloride ions from our sodium chloride solution end up traveling through this little cotton plug in our salt bridge into our solution of zinc sulfate to balance out the positive charge over here. And if we take a look, what ends up happening on this side is that copper 2 plus ions are going to turn into copper metal atoms as electrons start traveling through this little wire and into this copper metal bar here. So because copper 2 plus is turning into copper metal right here and is going to end up being insoluble at that point, what ends up happening in this solution of copper 2 sulfate here is that a negative charge ends up building up. And so to balance out the negative charge of this solution right here, what's going to end up happening is that sodium ions from our salt bridge that contains a solution of sodium chloride is going to travel through this little cotton plug right here to balance out the negative charge over here. And so what's going to end up happening over time? Well, if we think about it, what ends up happening is that the zinc bar here this zinc metal bar here is going to decrease in size as more of these zinc metal atoms turn into zinc ions and jump off of this 
zinc metal bar into solution. And if we think about it, over here on this side, what's going to end up happening to this copper metal bar here? What's going to end up happening is this. We have copper 2 plus ions that are jumping onto this copper metal bar as more and more electrons travel this way through the wire onto here. And so what's going to end up happening is that the size of this copper metal bar is going to increase over time. And so over time, what might this look like? Well, let's take a look. And so over time, what's going to end up happening is that our zinc metal bar is going to decrease in size, like we can see right here. And our copper metal bar is going to increase in size as copper ions become copper atoms. Over here, the decrease in size is going to be due to the zinc atoms turning into zinc ions and dissolving into our solution right here. So understand that point uh, of what's happening right here. Understand how galvanic cells work. And understand where we can find the cathode and uh, the anode, right? The points where reduction is taking place over here and the point where oxidation is taking place over here, right? So we have oxidation happening to these guys here and therefore this spot or this zinc right here is going to be the anode and over here we have reduction taking place and so over here we have our cathode when we take a look at this example so if you like what you see go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel and feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below and i really hope you guys found this helpful